hello and good afternoon. Like you said, my name is Anjanette, and I did just graduate from NMC with an Associates in Visual Communications. And I've been asked to speak to you today because of my role as Editor-in-Chief of the NMC Magazine. Our most recent issue, we explored how people personally flourish, whether it's in their education, their career, their health, and so forth. So today, I hope to inspire you by talking to you about how I have personally flourished, by facing my fears and saying yes more to opportunities that present themselves. While I'm talking to you about my experiences, I would like to, you to think about how this can apply to you. What can you do that are, that, what things can you do that are similar to tackle your fears, achieve your goals, and infuse passion into your life? In 2009, I found myself laid off for the second time from a dead-end job that didn't even utilize my bachelor's in business. I didn't feel creative or passionate about what I was doing. I felt like I needed to go back to school, expand my skill set, and find something that I was passionate about. But going back and studying more business to get an MBA didn't really pique my interest, but I was still unsure of what would. It wasn't until I reconnected with a friend of mine that I got closer to my answer. She was doing web design in Chicago and she loved it. She showed me her portfolio and I became inspired. It looked like fun, something creative, and I thought, hey, maybe I could do that. But I was still a little unsure because I'd never considered myself an artist. I mean, sure, my brother can draw extremely well. And even my grandfather is, was a published cartoonist. But, um, and I've always been interested in photography and arts and crafts, but I could only draw stick figures, so I didn't think I could do it. Luckily, I met someone who became one of my best friends, and she had just successfully completed the visual communications program at NMC. And she assured me that if she could do it, so could I, because after all, she could only draw stick figures too. Now I had my answer. And how fortunate that this gem of a program was offered here locally and affordably. I signed up in the fall of 2009, and I was definitely scared. I was afraid I'd be the oldest student in my class, that I wouldn't fit in. Wondered if I could even handle working and going to school again, because after all, I hadn't been in a classroom for nearly five years. But my biggest fear was that I had already invested five years to attain my bachelor's degree, and I still f found myself unfulfilled in my career options. So what if I go back, invest another two to three years, get another degree, and end up with the same result? But all fear, yours and mine, share the same origin, the unknown and uncertainty. I was afraid because I didn't know what to expect. Would I succeed? Could I afford it? Will it pay off in the end? The list goes on. But what trumped those fears was knowing deep down in my heart that something needed to change in my life, and I felt that more school would help me explore new opportunities to find my passion. And a funny thing happened. I made it. Who knew the average age of an NMC student is 28? I was 27 at the time. There was no problem fitting in, and I've made some great friends. I was able to adapt right back into the classroom, and I thrived. And sure, I am just recently graduated, and I have no idea if I'm going to find a design job right away. But I have found my passion in art, gained more confidence in my abilities, and now I have a portfolio, something tangible, that gives me confidence when entering the workplace. Yes, it did pay off in the end, and in more ways than one. But it wasn't only just going back to school that helped me get to where I am today but it was my willingness to say yes more to opportunities that came my way while going to school. I joined the NMC Magazine my first year. I thought it would be a great way to put myself out there, make new friends, and get involved on campus. I was a little nervous. I didn't know if the other students would even like me, what kind of responsibilities would I have, and was I even creative enough? Again, the list goes on. As a design staff, I ended up learning some of the design software before I even took the classes required to learn it. I made new friends. I learned about putting a student publication together, and I went to New York, all expenses paid, to attend a design conference. But the most rewarding experience from joining the NMC magazine was when I was asked to be editor-in-chief last year. 
This raised a whole new batch of fears. Will I even have enough time? After all, it was going to be during my last semester of school, and I was fully aware how heavy the coursework was going to be. Do I have what it takes to be a leader? What if I fail and we don't get an issue out? But in the face of those fears, I said yes, because I knew it would be a great opportunity for growth and look great on a resume, too. Little did I know that I would gain so much more. Last October, I was fortunate enough to go to Stockholm, Sweden with the magazine. The purpose of this trip was to attend a Future Cities conference to explore our fall theme of thrivability. We learned how other countries were readapting their infrastructure to become more sustainable. But in addition, we went to the top graphic design school where I became completely inspired by the, the work their students were creating. This gave me a new perspective and infused my passion in global design. But this was just the tip of the iceberg. Our thrivability issue was so well received, we just won the NEMIAC Environmentalist of the Year Award. We were the first recipients as well. Because of this accolade, I was in the newspaper and I received recognition from my peers and the business community. I also won first place in the graphic design category at the NMC Art Show for its layout design. So, just by saying yes to the opportunity to join the student group, in spite of my fears and my insecurities, I have improved my graphic design skills, traveled to another country, became an editor-in-chief, and won awards, and now I have an award-winning piece in my portfolio. Fear is a sign to move forward. And every time I face my fears, I realize that I have emerged stronger and more confident. When I decided to join the White Pine Press my second year at NMC, fear was a catalyst for that. I was afraid I couldn't afford my rent, and I needed to supplement my income, so I began looking for student employment. The paper sort of just fell into my lap. I didn't even know there was a graphic design department at a newspaper, but a friend encouraged me to attend a meeting. I was offered the production manager position, and in the face of my doubts, I said yes, for the most basic of reasons. It looked good on a resume. I gained so much more. As a production team, we ended up going to cover the Stephen Colbert John Stewart rally in Washington, DC. I've won numerous awards for my design work from the Michigan Community College Press Association. So that's more award-winning work in my portfolio. But I've also honed down my typographic and layout skills. The most unexpected opportunity from the White Pine Press, though, was my internship at Travers Magazine. It was this internship that gave me the confidence that I can succeed as a graphic designer. I was adding pieces to my portfolio that were actually being produced and used. I also learned a lot about event planning, gained real world marketing experience, and I realized I really liked publication design, and now I felt like I was more guided on what I wanted to do with my visual communications degree. Now imagine if I had said no because of my fears. My fear of not having enough time or fear of not knowing what I was doing. I may have never known about this, opp this opportunity for the internship and even explored publication as a direction. You have to jump at these opportunities because you never know where they may lead. Look where it led me. One opportunity builds on another. And we are not born with fear. It comes from fat past failures, rejection, and negativity. Think about it. What would you love to do if only you weren't so scared. What have you missed out on in life because you've allowed fear to stand in your way? Fear is ubiquitous, everyone feels it, but it's what you do with that fear that really makes a difference. For example, when I was younger, I used to be so shy. I remember when my mom encouraged me to take ballet lessons, but because I was so afraid to meet new people, I declined. I missed out. But it was that shyness that I wanted to overcome, and with the right mentality, I did. It was the mentality of positive thinking and believing that I can do it. It's natural to want to avoid fear and fearful situations, but what I have learned is that it's those situations 
that makes one flourish. Overcoming my shyness was one of my first hurdles in facing my fears. And it gained me the confidence needed so I would become so involved on campus and in our community. When I first moved to Traverse City in 2007, I joined the Young Professionals. It was my desire for community involvement and also to meet new people. But this led to one of my most life-changing experiences. I was invited to attend a Rotary meeting, and although intimidating, I went anyways. I ended up learning about their Group Study Exchange Program, or GSC, and I met the visiting team from Brazil. GSC is an opportunity for 25 to 40 year old professionals to travel to another country for a month. The purpose is to learn about your profession through vocational visits. But what's so enriching about this opportunity is that you stay with host families and you become completely immersed in the culture. The destination changes every year and for 2010 it was to Norway. This was before Sweden and I'd always wanted to travel to another country but I could never afford it. So maybe this would be my, be my chance, and I applied for it. I had butterflies in my stomach. I was afraid of whether I could afford it, could I get the necessary time off, and could I even learn the language? I didn't know what to expect. But I did know it would be an amazing opportunity. I interviewed in front of a panel of 15 Rotary members, being quizzed about the Rotary and their district, all the while trying to convince them why I should go. I was chosen as an alternate candidate in the case that somebody couldn't go, but I was promised a spot on their next year's team to Germany. So in my mind, I had already won. But about two months before the team was to depart, I was informed that one of the teammates could no longer go, and I found myself on board in Norway. I immediately went and got language tapes, travel guides, and started researching their culture. My time in Norway was completely life-changing. I stayed with the most generous host families that made me feel right at home. I visited design firms that left me inspired, and I knew now I had made the right decision for my new career path. I had amazing adventures. There was so much I learned, not only about how they live, but about graphic design that I was excited to take back with me and share. I felt so empowered. And I never would have had the opportunity to be a U.S. ambassador for Rotary if it wasn't for me getting over my shyness, putting myself out there, and seeking any opportunity. When you say yes, you embrace the possible. It's amazing for me to think how much I have accomplished in the past three years. On a college student's budget, I've traveled nationally and overseas. I've overcome many fears, and I've gained my confidence. Even standing in front of you today is facing my fear of public speaking. But when I was asked by TEDx, TEDx to speak here, I knew I had to say yes. Because not only is it an honor, but it is an opportunity for me to grow. And although I was afraid that I may speak too fast, and I still probably did at times, or choke on stage, I think I'm doing a pretty good job so far. Now I would like to show you a clip from Yes Man to illustrate my point on how trying new things can enrich your life and lead to unexpected opportunities. I do want to take the lessons. I do want to learn how to fly. Yes, I would like to learn Korean. I would understand. What did he call me? <laughs> I just love this movie because he ends up doing so many things that he wouldn't have done if he didn't say yes. He saves the day for his best friend's fiance because he just so happened to learn Korean. He saves a man from jumping off a ledge by playing a song he just so happened to learn from his guitar lessons. I know this is a silly movie, but the principle still remains. 
I highly encourage you to try something new that you may have been too afraid to try for fear of looking like a fool or not succeeding. Because in the end, the real success is in the saying yes, regardless of what the outcome may be, facing your fears and going for it. I've shared my experiences with you, not to toot my own horn, but to show you that if I can do it, so can you. Fear comes in many forms, from a fear of heights to a fear of quitting your job and starting your own business. But by starting small and tackling the small fears, the bigger fears start to become more manageable. The opportunity is yours to grab. Thank you for letting me speak here today.